All right, y'all, let's play a little game of Would You Rather. Would you rather this? Polaroid i2, very modern, lots of technology, easy to use, has a rechargeable battery. Or would you rather this? A bit more cumbersome, big and heavy, very old school, lots of mechanical stuff, no battery. But hold on, let's open it so you can see how beautiful this is. Would you rather this? Old school and beautiful or modern and plastic? Hold on just a second. I had a whole video planned basically bashing this camera. I was gonna say how it's all plastic, it's got all these buttons that are digital that you can't press and hear the clicks and you can't feel the mechanical feedback and how I don't really like the Polaroid film itself. But you know what? Despite those feelings, which I think are true, this camera is great and I actually really, really like it. It all changed for me recently when I brought this to a client shoot. I was shooting outside in the streets, kind of on location, running gun street photography style, but for an editorial client. And I was using a film camera, I was using a digital camera, and I brought this. And the beauty of this camera is how effortless it was to use it. I was shooting in aperture priority mode, controlling just the aperture setting, and then everything else the camera took care of for me, including the focusing. I would just put this up to my eye, point the LiDAR at my subject, looking through the little display on the inside here, and every single time I nailed the focus, even when the subject was backlit, which you'll see a lot of photos here, the subjects were completely backlit. That was kind of the vibe that we went for. And despite the film being expired, which is a whole separate thing, this delivered the quality that I was looking for. So I cannot bash this camera. This camera is fantastic. If you want something that's reliable and will get out of your way, and it's a Polaroid camera, this is the one for you. I will say though, the things that I don't like about this camera are still true, but they're not big enough. They're not problematic enough to make me not want to use this camera ever. So let's dig into those really quickly. First and foremost, the elephant in the room here is that this camera is basically a whole lot of plastic. You don't have, you know, metal things. You don't have shiny chrome things. You don't have mechanical things. And that's part of why people love shooting analog photography with old film cameras. They're beautiful pieces of engineering that you can feel and touch and hear. This camera has like very basically no sounds, except for when you hear the lens move back and forth for focusing. Other than that, the buttons are plasticky, they're electronic, the feedback isn't great. This scroll wheel here, I mean, you can hear it. That's about as mechanical as you're gonna get on this camera. Obviously it's not mechanical, it's digital, but I absolutely do not like this scroll wheel. And the faster and harder that you push on it, the less responsive it is. You really have to take your time and press slowly, which is probably fine for most people, but I'm always in a rush. I'm always trying to do the next thing. So that is really, really annoying. This exposure compensation switch um, also has a little bit of a, you know, feedback there as you can hear, but you know, again, digital button. Exposure compensation is amazing though, especially with Polaroid film where, you know, you never really know what you're gonna get if you're shooting in full auto. So using that as a tool to kind of dial in that exposure is very, very important. So yeah, the plastic thing I don't really like, but it's the modern times. It is what it is. One thing I thought I wasn't gonna like about this camera was the lens because it's a plastic lens, but I'm no engineer, I'm no scientist. Whatever they did with this plastic, they did it right because as far as I can tell, there is no real difference between what you get with this lens and what you get with some of the old school lenses on the SX70 camera, for example. Um, you get beautiful bokeh at f11, which is as wide open as you can go, and the images are sharp, or as sharp as you can get with Polaroid film. So, you know, just because this is plastic doesn't mean it sucks, because it doesn't, honestly. Um, the last thing I'll say is Polaroid film is just not my favorite film. I shoot a lot of Instax film on this camera right here, and I love the result I get on the Instax film on this camera, and with any camera that has a real good lens, not the plastic, really crappy Instax lenses that you get on those cheap cameras that they make. But Polaroid film, even with the best lenses that are available for Polaroid film, Something about it just doesn't hit for me. It's hard to describe, but the images just don't feel kind of rich. And maybe that's the look that Polaroid is intending to deliver with their film, and that's fine. I used it and I'm gonna continue using it, but if Instax came out with a camera like this that shot on Instax Square, I would immediately switch to that. Sorry, Polaroid, this camera's great, but if we had the same thing with Instax, I think, in my opinion, that would be even better. 
Um, but yeah, Polaroid film, this isn't my favorite. I'll admit, I've only shot I-type film because that's kind of the standard film for this, but you can shoot um, other types of film as well. I think there's a, two other types of film you can shoot and they vary in ISO and they'll give you different looks. I will say though, I guess this is important to mention, the black and white film on Polaroid is actually fantastic. I don't like the color film basically at all. Um, even with filters and stuff like that, I just really don't like it. But the black and white film is actually beautiful. Um, here's some examples of shots that I've taken on it. I just love how contrasty and how rich this image looks, especially in the blacks. Typically that's where there's no data because of the limited dynamic range of the film. But that black looks fantastic. And when you have fresh film, it looks great. On expired film, doesn't look that great, honestly. Expired film for Polaroid tends to expire really, really fast. And I guess maybe this is for instant film in general. It's not like negative film, where expired film can perform very, very well, so I'm not to store it properly. I bought some expired film recently from Adorama at a discounted price, and I decided to give it a shot. And it's very hit or miss. Some shots are acceptable, others are not. So that's the risk you take when you shoot expired instant film or specifically expired Polaroid film. But in general, fresh black and white Polaroid film, I type is fantastic. And there's a new emulsion now that you can check out. I have some information below, but the black and white film has been upgraded to have even more dynamic range. So I'm very excited about that. Definitely gonna be testing that out at some point. So long story short, would I recommend this to you? Absolutely. A lot of people are saying this is way too expensive. This was $600. And I think you get what you pay for here. This is not a $600 Polaroid camera like the classic ones that they typically put out. And when I say classic, I mean the non-i2 versions, the cheaper plasticky ones, the gimmicky ones, the ones without really amazing lenses. Um, I wouldn't buy those even for $100 because they just don't appeal to me. But this machine right here, with all of the capabilities that it has and the ability to fully control every single setting on here, even if you have to use these really annoying wheels, that is amazing and no other Polaroid camera can do that outside of the old school ones, the SX-70, you know, that generation. Um, but they don't have LiDAR autofocusing. They've got other type of autofocusing, which is awesome, honestly, but this is a modern package and there's a rechargeable battery inside, which I absolutely love. Some people hate it because they're already worried about it going bad, you know, in many, many years. Hopefully Polaroid does have an answer to that, maybe a replacement program or a specific warranty for that. I don't know, but I'm not worried about that right now. I just know that I can do it all with this camera. Um, so I'm gonna keep using this and I'm feeling very excited after the shoot that I did recently because it was so easy to switch back and forth between the cameras and the client loved it. They loved having photos that they can see immediately that were specific to film. Obviously the digital photos I shot on my digital camera they could see right away, but for film, it's very nice to be able to hand them something, especially something like a Polaroid that has all that nostalgia built into it. It has that, you know, happy experience of sharing a physical photo with somebody. You cannot replace that. It's not something that you can kind of switch with like an iPad to see digital images. That's cool, but it's just not the same. We love analog photography here and that's exactly why. All right, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. Would you rather have this or this classic Polaroid here? Um, I put it on Instagram and I was actually surprised at how many people would prefer the old school one versus the new one. I thought it'd be more 50-50, but I actually think it leaned a bit more towards the old school. Um, and maybe that's not a surprise because, you know, we're in the analog space, so people want the analog experience. But either way, the best thing here is having both. All right, y'all, to the next video. I'm out.